Hi everyone, Pierrick from P2 Design here. In this video, I will be reviewing and improving one of my students' artwork. Let's get started. Following the Game Boy project, my latest free course that is available on my Gumroad page and here on YouTube, Elawi created his own character, rigged it, animated it, and created this nice render. He did a super good job and posted his artwork on Twitter and tagged me. From there, he was kind enough to provide me his Blender file and the animation he has created and allowed me to do this video for you so that we can see what he has done and see how we can improve both the animation and the render. Let's get started. The first thing I've done was simply to organize a scene in the outliner so that I can isolate the sky, the background and the character. One of the first little issue I wanted to address was the stone on the ground that were not perfectly looping. You can see right here the stone popping out in the screen. You can learn this technique in chapter 13 of the Game Boy project which is available on my YouTube channel following the link in the description below. The trick is pretty simple, I'm on frame 0, I will duplicate the stone and unparent them but keep the transformation, go to the very last frame and reparent them to the sphere, so that both first and last frame will be exactly the same with the stone in exactly the same position and so it will be looping perfectly. Then I wanted to fix the feet animation. You can see that they are not touching the ground, they are floating a bit. As shown in the walk cycle animation chapter, I will directly edit the animation curves. With the foot controller bone selected, I will select the Z location and I will slightly offset down the Z position so that the foot does contact with the sphere. I did the same on the other side and then I just wanted to input a bit more of rotation to make the foot snapping onto the ground so that I believed it would be more interesting. Finally, I felt like those feet, the back ones, were kind of sliding onto the ground compared to the front feet that were moving enough in contact with the crown. So the problem was the Y position of those feet. So I just re-edited the curve, made sure that once on the ground, the Y location curve were with a linear interpolation and then just revise a bit the Z position so that it follow the curvature of the ground. From there, I've repolished a bit the rotation of those feet. Then I spotted a little problem on the back of the camel. We do have a slight jumping effect on the hump, but it's very subtle. If you remember the technique covered in the easy torso bouncing animation, we have used the main torso controller animation and pasted it onto the top part of the torso. But the secret trick was to then offset the animation in time by one or two frames. While here when I display both animation, I can see that the Z curve is perfectly aligned. And so the bouncing occur at the same time as the up and down motion of the dorsal, so we don't get the follow through animation that will bring this slight delay in the motion and so this really improved bouncing effect. So the simple thing is to offset the animation of the squash and stretch controller by one or two frames and then if you want you can increase the scale of the Z location curve so that it will amplify the effect. I'd love to see what you have done following the course, so if you're up to, please share what you have done on Twitter and don't forget to tag me. And if you enjoy this content, I will be more than happy to provide other video critiques on this specific course or on other courses that will come. Another clever move Elawi did was to add those controllers on the side to move the clothes. So I did exactly the same, I've slightly offset their movement in time. 
Another little problem I wanted to address was the movement of the tail that was a bit too fast and a bit too stiff, I believe. To fix its animation, I've erased all the keyframe of the free bone in the tail chain. And then I've used exactly the same technique used in the course to animate the arms. I've started animating the root of the tail, adding a bit of swigging on only one axis. And then I've inputted the same rotation with a slight delay or slight offset on the next joint of the tail. From there, I did have a very nice and smooth tail animation. Next is the head animation. Elawi did a rig the whole neck as a forward kinematic chain, meaning that you need to animate each joint separately as we just did for the tail. To simplify everything, what I did is that I converted this forward kinematic chain as an inverse kinematic chain as we did for the legs of our character in the course. This will allow me to animate the whole neck and the head at the same time, moving only one bone. The only thing I had to do then was to parent the head to this controller so that it doesn't rotate weirdly. And then what I will do is that I will key this newly created controller and I will parent it to the main torso controller and I will do as for our squash and stretch or hump animation, I will simply offset the animation of the torso onto the head. This unfortunately brings some bugs onto the back of the character with some clipping as you can see. But I will fix this little issue later in the video. What I did just after was to input a bit of motion into the jaw of the character. The goal of this course was to be able to create a playing animation with as less effort as possible. And this is what I will do right now. Instead of trying to animate the rotation of the jaw based on the movement of the head, I will create a new constraint, so I will scale the bone to be able to extrude a new one. I will clear the parenting and I will scale down the bone. And now I will use a dumped track constraint onto the jaw, meaning that the jaw bone will be always targeting this newly created bone. And guess what? This constraint will allow me to play on the rotation of the jaw bone by moving or using the location of the other bone. Since we've been animating everything or mostly everything playing with the location, I will then parent this bone to the head and I will copy the animation of the head bone onto this newly created bone and offset it in time. And this will bring the follow through animation for free just for me. Now I need to fix the issue of the claws on the back of the character. So what I will do is that I will use a shrink wrap modifier and using vertex group, I will limit its effectiveness on top of the character on top of his back. Since the modifier is placed after the armature modifier, once the character is deformed or animated, then the shrink wrap occur and will stick the cloth on the skin of the character. Then in a final stage, I just revised a bit the topology of the cloth because there was a little issue with the solidify modifier since the pocket on the side was a closed mesh. Here you can see on the left the original animation and on the right the one I fixed. There is still room for improvement, but that's a little better. On this specific artwork, animation was the field that required the most work to be improved. But lighting is also very important. And in this case, using the HDRI Chiara down from HDRI Haven wasn't the best choice because it's very smooth. But when I see this character, I immediately think about the desert or something with a very shiny and warm sun. So I've downloaded new HDRI from HDRI Heaven. You will find the link in the description of the video. And I find some that would better fit. 
Then I revised the backlight because it was a little too big and a little too strong so it was inputting a lot of blue in the global atmosphere while I wanted something warmer. Then I was a bit concerned by the clouds head because separating those parts that much make them look like little robots more than different clouds. So I've been experimenting different shapes using curve to create a new shape of cloud so that we don't do exactly the same as in the previous course. But in the end, I got back onto the round shaped clouds because this new shape didn't really read well and they look like little flying poop in the sky. The other thing that was a bit bothering me was those pointy mountains in the back. These white colors made me think of the snow so it didn't really fit what I was thinking about for this artwork. So I've created smooth and rounded plane to create some dune silhouettes uh, that will be seen in the back of the character. Once they were modeled, I've unwrapped them so that I can easily play with the mapping node to wrap a gradient color on top of it. This is something we have covered in the very last chapter of the course. From there, we can see that we have really modified and I believe improved the mood of this scene. From there, I've just fixed the shape of my cloud and I've added a bit of depth of field onto the camera. I've checked his compositing and it was already very good. And the fun fact is that Elawi in his compositing has used very warm color. So I do believe that in the back of his mind he was thinking about or feeling that his character had to be in a warm atmosphere. So then I just add to it render and here is the final result. So you can see that fixing a bit the animation but working on the compositing was a big deal here. And if you want to follow this course, it's totally free. Just check out the link at the end of this video and please subscribe and give a like if you've enjoyed my content. See you!